Well, I know it seems like, I don't know, a little extreme, but honestly, if you look at some of the records, this could be one of the strongest areas of low pressure that we've seen in many, many years. Take a look at this. I mean, this is the surface map heading into next week. Clearly strong air, uh, low pressure developing across the central plains, but I want to show you something. Do you see this red line here across the central U.S.? These are March record low sea level pressures or surface pressures. And if you zoom in, you've got this area here across Kansas, also back across Iowa, also into Nebraska. I mean, you're talking about, you know, if you can get down into 980 millibars or lower, you're challenging records that go back to the 70s, even the 50s. Is it plausible? Is it possible? Certainly, it is. If you look at some of these this model data, and what does that mean? Well, we could see some really strong winds, maybe a severe weather outbreak, still a little too early to tell, and of course, these models could flop. Now, I want to show you something that I think is interesting. If you go over to the European uh, this is the AI version. I mean, it's probably the weaker version. Still, it's got a 980 millibar low swinging through central Iowa as we head through next Saturday. And if you look at, go back to some of the records, I mean, that's pretty darn close to knocking some of those records that may go back to, I'm just looking at the other map here, back to the 70s. Some of those records across northeast Iowa go back to 2007, and then some of them across parts of Texas, West Kansas, even Colorado goes back to 2019. So not all of, all of them go back to the 50s and 70s, but bottom line is this is a really strong looking storm and really impressive. So we're going to talk about that today. The Storm Prediction Center already highlighting this area out ahead of our storm for day six. This would be Friday and then into Saturday, moving a little bit further to the south and east. So and by the Sunday, that predictability too low. And this would likely expand. We're talking about day six, so something to keep an eye on as we head through the week. On the northwest side of wherever this low goes, it's going to be cold. And I think with you know pressure gradients that tight, you're going to be looking at a blizzard somewhere. Blizzard conditions anyway. So a very interesting thing to watch this upcoming week. And we're going to talk about all of that here in today's video. Welcome. I'm Travis. If you're new to the channel, thanks for coming by. I've spent years on TV forecasting weather just like this. And now uh, I've been out of that business for a while. We're doing it here on YouTube. So thanks for coming over. If you're joining the live stream, welcome this morning. Thanks for coming over. If you're on playback, that's all good. Uh, as well, you can come back anytime. If you miss these live videos, subscribe, come over and uh, you can check them out. I try to keep them brief. We don't spend a lot of time on things, but we are going to dig into some details today regionally. Uh, and go through it. Low pressure moving through the south uh, today through Monday. And by the way, um, this is bringing some heavy rain, some severe weather. We've, it's had a history of that as this upper low swings through. A couple of inches of rain, certainly possible through Monday across Florida, Georgia, South Carolina. And look at what's happening on the northern side of this. Maybe some snow trying to mix in here into the mountains of North Carolina and far southwest Virginia. It's certainly not a huge thing to write home about, but nonetheless, Something to make, take note of. Some colder air trying to work in here across Minnesota. We'll talk about that in just a moment. And then otherwise, we're watching this upper low swing into Southern California. That's going to bring some rain, maybe some snow to the far southwest. And here comes our big storm heading now into Wednesday. Big snow for the Sierra, Northern California, Oregon, up into Washington, Idaho. We're going to see some heavy snow out of this and maybe even into Southern California as this trough really digs far to the south. Once this energy moves across the Rockies, it's going to bring some snow into Arizona, some rain too, into New Mexico with snow in the higher elevations, Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana. And then there goes your low pressure. Again, possibly challenging some of those record surface low pressures, or at least some of the lowest surface pressures that we've seen in many years. And even if it doesn't, okay, forget the record aspect of it. This is looking like a really strong mid-latitude cyclone wrapping up across the country. Uh, and out ahead of it, a lot of warm air and your severe risk certainly there as a strong jet stream swings through uh, and a jet streak. So that's a concern. And no matter what, a strong wind maker. Keep in mind, if you get something down in the 960s to 970s millibar wise, you're looking at something with surface pressure as strong as a Cat 2 hurricane. I'm not saying you're going to see Cat 2 hurricane winds by any stretch, but the fact that that pressure is low, really, really impressive. Big snow, big wind. Again, I think blizzard conditions possible on the northwest side of this. And then once this moves through some really cold air pushing way into the south, so well below average for this time of year, then we're going to be dealing with some thunderstorms out ahead of this as this moves east. And then everything pushes off to the east. Let's dive in a little closer. We'll talk about some of these details here. We'll first look into the northeast. There comes some light snow through today into tonight into parts of Maine. There could be a heavier burst of snow towards the early morning hours of Monday across the Green and White Mountains, northern Vermont, New Hampshire, 
Uh, maybe even in parts of down east, Maine, some light snow here. Otherwise, we turn cold and windy with another system moving through by Tuesday. A little bit warmer here. We're talking about just rain showers. And by the way, if you're just tuning in, we're going across the whole country. We're just starting here into the northeast. Uh, and then we have another weak system moving through by the time we get to Thursday. Temperatures here. Let's look at these numbers through today. Still cold, especially across northern parts of New England. Uh, but we're warming up here across Pennsylvania, Maryland, up into the 50s now, even into parts of New Jersey, New York City, getting very close to 50. And then as we head into Monday, high temperatures here, quite a bit warmer. We're back up into the 60s. Let's move into the southeast where there's a lot of rain moving through, some severe weather here too. This continues to push off to the east as we move through today uh, into tonight. Some really heavy rain possible out of this with a few strong thunderstorms, damaging winds. Certainly wouldn't say we're not going to see a tornado here. If you go over to the day one convective outlook, certainly an area to watch is here across North Florida with a, not a zero threat of tornado, not off the charts either, but either way could happen. Uh, at least the storm prediction center out in Norman, in Oklahoma is launching that heavy rain on the North side of that. This is the European. It doesn't want to bring that cold air very far or that rain. I should say very far to the North. It keeps the snow out of the mountains here into North Carolina, which probably is what's going to happen to be fair. Uh, it doesn't, even if it does snow, it's not going to be very much. Uh, and then we're just dealing with a cold rain here as we head into Monday and then early into Tuesday that finally moves offshore. And then we dry out here across much of this region. Another weak system will move through as we move into Thursday and Friday, and that'll bring a few showers to the south. And then we start to get windy out ahead of our next storm heading into Friday. Strong southerly flow picking up. Temperatures here will be really warm. And then you're watching the severe aspect of this heading into Friday. More details to come on that. And there's a closer look at that severe outlook across Florida. Temperatures across the south on this Sunday starting off not bad. I mean, and as we head into the afternoon, a little cool here just because of the cloud cover. But Florida, really nice into the 80s. We're up into the 50s and 60s as far north as Des Moines. Uh, all the way up to Chicago, close to 60. Tonight, another cool night, back into the 30s and 40s. And then as we head into Monday, even warmer. How about this? Upper 60s, close to 70. I'm going to push this out further in time. All the way into Tuesday, we've got mid-70s, close to 80. Some of you spring lovers absolutely really enjoying this. And out ahead of our system, another warm day Wednesday. But look what happens as we head into Thursday. We really start to crank things up. This could be a concern too. 70s, close to 80 heading into Friday. Again, remember, you're moving your storm into this area at that time. So very unstable uh, with warmer temperatures and a lot of moisture around for those for that low to work with in that front. All right, here's what we're watching heading in through Tuesday around the Great Lakes. The real weather maker to the north into Canada. It's going to pick the winds up here around the Great Lakes. Temperatures dropping. Uh, and then another weak system will move through, really affecting I mean, we might get some light snow into the UP of Michigan out of this. Otherwise, temperatures on the way up here into Michigan, all the way back into Wisconsin, too, uh, as southerly flow develops. And then here comes your low. Again, this is your strong storm with maybe some severe weather pretty far to the north heading into Friday and Saturday. Temperatures across this region, the coldest across Canada. You can see how that warm air continues to push up to the north out ahead of our, uh, our system that's moving through Canada. And you're your dividing line between that really cold and warm air up here so that's where your storm track is and then there comes some colder air trying to wrap in behind that low it doesn't really move very far to the south you can see the coldest air i mean that's pretty chilly too below zero temperatures across canada that arctic air isn't too far away and you can see the temperature gradient that's here so a really volatile situation when you look at how these strong march storms can form uh, and it's the time of year uh, when we see that uh, stronger sun angle versus the very cold Arctic air that still lingers from winter. All right, across the uh, the central United States, the southern plains here, fairly dry at least through Wednesday. And now we start to watch this week's system, which could bring a few showers and then move off to the east. And then here comes the heavy snow back to the west across the four corner states. And boom, there goes low pressure rapidly developing just east of the mountains. And now we're, we're the severe threat is on. All right. Temperatures across the southern plains here across the central U.S. How about mid-60s, close to 70 across parts of Kansas into Texas. Looking beautiful here, too, with warm weather. And look how warm it gets heading into Monday. Upper 70s, close to 80 in some areas. Zooming in a little bit further to the north, we're dry here, at least through most of today. A few light snow showers, maybe some rain showers skirting the U.S.-Canadian border. Then that moves east, otherwise high pressure. And another weak system may bring a little bit more light snow by Wednesday. Otherwise, kind of quiet. Winds do start to pick up. And then again, we're watching our storm, which will impact you guys. I think this is an area to watch for some really heavy snow. Now, this is the European. I'm going to pop over to the GFS. There is 
some disagreement on how strong the storm will get, but either way, you're showing a strong storm moving through here with big winds, maybe even blizzard conditions uh, across the northern plains into the Dakotas, and then moving north into Canada. Let's look at the temperatures here through today. Check this out, your snow, keeping things cold. We're melting that snow with temperatures warming up into the 60s around it, though, and that snow will continue to just go away. We're talking 70s now, close to Valentine anyway, in the 60s. 70s into Iowa, and uh, even down to, I mean, numbers all the way. I, let's back that up just a little bit. Check this out. Almost to the Canadian border, we're looking at almost 60s, but look, just north of it in the 70s. And what I was going to say is things are going down behind this. We're going to have a weak system move through. So temperatures across the northern tier dropping back some uh, as we move through the week. Across the far southwest, we start dry, at least through Sunday. High pressure holding on. There comes our next weather maker heading into Tuesday. It'll bring some rain showers into the far southwest. And then here comes the heavy snow into California. Snow levels will definitely drop with this. Uh, and then we're looking at some big snow too, especially into the mountains. Could be measuring it in feet here as we head through March. Your temperatures across this part of the country, clearly driven by your mountains, your elevation, but you get the idea. 70s for the Central Valley. Uh, and then we're talking about 70s too, down into Phoenix. Flagstaff warming up today, back above freezing. We're getting into the 40s, melting some of that snow where we saw nearly a foot of snow. Uh, and then your temperatures start to really crash down as we move through the week. Now, I'm going to push this out ahead of time, time and show you that. You get the idea. As we move toward Thursday and Friday, uh, places even like Phoenix highs back into the 50s. Now, let's move to the northwest. We do have some moisture here moving in. That's going to bring some heavy rain and snow to the Pacific Northwest. Uh, the, the coastal ranges, big rain moving in, big wind by Tuesday. Uh, and then this could bring some really heavy snow. We've talked about that here, not just for Northern, Carolina, uh, Northern California, but into the Cascades. And then that pushes inland too, from the Sierras, inland and across Nevada, into the Wasatch, heavy snow into the Northern Rockies now, into Idaho, Montana. This could be uh, one heck of a, an accumulating snow event. And then temperatures drop behind that again as we head into Friday and then into Saturday. And a quick look at temperatures through the next couple of days. This is a look at your high temperatures on Sunday. Not looking too bad here across the Pacific Northwest. Cold, typically cold across parts of Canada. Cold into the mountains here, but we're warming up. Places like Boise into the mid-50s, Salt Lake City, close to 50 at least today anyway. And temperatures as we head into Monday, slightly warmer. Up into the mid-50s for Salt Lake City. Boise may get very close to 60. And then Seattle into the 40s here in the Pacific Northwest. You get the idea. And then watch this as we move toward Thursday and Friday these temperatures really crashing down with afternoon high temperatures held back quite a bit compared to where we're at today. So again, if you're just joining the video, it's available for playback. I talk about the record low pressure that we could possibly be seeing. If you're watching it and, it's, and it is the playback, and if you're new to the channel, I hope you'll come back and subscribe. Thanks for watching. More to come on this potentially record-breaking storm all week. I'll see you next time.